very important in terms of our action plan, action, in view of what we've talked about here. We've talked about yeah, being content, being happy. You sometimes hear the cl cliche, being a happy slave. But mm -hmm. let me say this: we have Brother Darius, who's joined us for YouTube purposes, and Miss Sheree Rogers. Miss Sheree Rogers, they've joined us for YouTube purposes, and um, thank y'all yeah. for coming. Yeah, and we're gonna come around. Well, a plan of action. We have to come together first. And we've never done that before. Okay, we have to come together all, across all age barriers, you know, handicaps, race, whatever we want to call it. Uh, we, we have to come together. And from there, we have to plan a course for the future. Okay? And I think we're doing some planning on that unity thing. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, it's essential that we do. Okay. We, we, we've been fragmented for decades now, and to the point where some of us are saying that, you know, there aren't any black leaders in the world. But there are plenty of black leaders. They're everywhere. Mm -hmm. But we've been, been um, uh, attacked so viciously by the media and others until we can't identify our own selves anymore. Okay, so we're going to have to do that. And then... Um, once we plot the course for our, our, um, um, our um, future, you know, we have to just walk into it. Okay, we have to be obedient to our our uh, uh, guidelines or policies or or directives that we're going to create for ourselves. They have to be a part of our family life, mm -hmm. our family structure. We have to teach our children that this is what this is where we're going. This is why. And this is what we're going to achieve. Okay. Miss Desiree Rogers, is it? Sure. Miss Cherie Rogers. Now, what about this content, uh, contentment, this happy, happy slave, this, <laughs> this well, division? You kind of scare me with that because I think I may be one of them. Okay. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with self-examination. Ain't that, ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. um, because you know, I got my office job, mm -hmm. and you know, I got a couple of degrees, and got a little excited, and uh, uh. think I done finally made it. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and I completely agree that it is definitely the happy slave. Um, theory that's going on throughout the African American community, and it is pretty scary because, like as you said, you know we don't have the leaders. We're not pushing forward. We're just content. We're just sitting still. We're at a standstill, and so we're just happy just okay. being right here on this one level. And so I look at the community and I look at the young people, and I don't even know if they're they're. I don't even know where they are mentally. I don't even know if they're the happiest. I don't know what they are. You know, but it, yeah. it, it really and truly does scare me with where the African American community is. You know, we have the people that are in my age range, you know, that, you know, went to school, got, got their degrees, got mm -hmm. their jobs, and the younger generations that's coming up, like, I don't even know if they strive for that. Okay. So I don't know what to do with this next generation. I don't know where mm -hmm. my community is going. Okay. And so that's kind of why right. I'm getting scared. Maybe we can move in that direction. Brother Darius is also with us. How about it, Brother Darius? Is there a mass, people talk about mass incarceration, is there a mass level of confusion out there in the African American community? A mass level of confusion, happy slave syndrome, content, apathy, and what should be done about it? Um, I, I do. I do, I do, I can see the happy slave syndrome. I also want to talk about what she was just, what she was going about the youth, the, the next generation of us. Mm -hmm. um, a few, uh, me and a few friends, we were talking about this the other day, that it's possible that this next generation is going to be the first generation of actually free black people. Mm -hmm. Because they're not connected to anything. They're not connected to our ancestry. Mm -hmm. They're not connected to what the white people are selling them. Well, they are well, they are coming into a world of we can pretty much do whatever we want to do whenever we want to do it. And to us, that's crazy for you to think that way. But they literally, because of the lack of um, 
when we drop the ball as elders and mentors and handed something down to them, they uh, they just believe they can do whatever they want to do. And that's the first step of freedom is you got to really believe that you can do anything. You got to believe you can fly. I, um, somebody made the analogy aerodynamically, the bee should not be able to fly. Thank God nobody ever told the bee. You know what I mean? So maybe these kids will fly because nobody ever told them that they can't. They come into a system where they say, the education don't work. Your, your companies ain't trying to hire me. So what I'm going to do is my own thing and build my own way. I'm going to speak how I want to speak. Okay. I'm going to do what I want to do. Where before we all talk that we cannot do that. So that's just a, another way to kind of look at these kids. Uh, um, possibly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brother Allah, what about the sense of direction in this particular equation that we're currently talking about? Well, number one, somebody, myself, have to take on the ownership of this is time to execute the startup. You know, all of these things that we say we must do and we have to do and we have to plan for, we've had too much time. So I'm proposing that I start it, people see what's happening, and then they have an opportunity to determine if they believe in it and join it. Okay. And that will that's but the contentment part is something that comes with the indoctrination that we've had for so many years. See, we have to understand that there are certain levels of consciousness. And if you're in the survival level of consciousness, where you're wor worried about food in your mouth, clothes on your back, uh, transportation, uh, a roof over your head, you have no time to worry about what's going on with everyone else. So we're constantly put in the position to think about these things on a survival level. So. Consequently, our children, our, our young, our youth, when they make it, as you say, you go to school, get your degrees, you're trying to actually maintain a household, you're trying to survive and make sure you live comfortably, but that's not how it should be. See, if we develop a community that's self-sustaining, our children will be able to go to school, learn from our own people, don't worry about where, you, where you're going to live, how you're going to get there what money you need to make right now because as a community, as a village, we're taking care of that. And most of the times, these other communities, that's what they're doing, but they took that information from us. We're the only ones that don't know that the village raised the kid. We talk that game, but we don't implement it. And so we need to develop a system, and I took this from this brother here, Darius, when he said to the other day, you can't tell these brothers out here how to do this, and, and they sitting up here making money. Um, selling drugs or whatever, and then you're gonna tell them that come with me and make a hundred dollars and they making a thousand dollars a week. Come on, they ain't gonna have that. That's why they content with what they're doing. We have to start and, like I said, execute a plan that's operating so they can see the benefits of being a part of that. And then we'll start galvanizing as, as a people because we're recognizing the children that are involved in this project here are going to Marcus Garvey are excelling in the universities, are becoming scientists, are becoming inventors, are doing the things that are necessary for our people to rise above and, and take their rightful position as leaders in this world and stewards of this, of this world that we once were. Most of our kids don't know that. Okay, I, I've heard you on this show, which is admirable, assume responsibility. And I've heard you talk about a plan of action course of action and alternatives. Will you be able to make an announcement at some point soon in terms of how you see projecting that plan? Will you be able to say on this day and at this time I'm going to be doing etc. with this group of brothers and sisters? Will you be able to do that? Okay, well number one, in order to know what direction to go in, you have to know what direction your enemy is coming from. Okay. Because nine times out of ten, if you don't recognize what angle they're coming from, then you're going to make the wrong decision. Okay. If now. we as a people are going to survive, the leaders of the group should never be exposed. Okay. Because once that leader is exposed, they're going to assassinate them. So we have to make sure that when we put things in place, we recognize where our enemy is and we make the right decisions. You know, I'm not going to brag and boast about some 
project that I've created that's going to help our people. Okay. Because they're going to do the, just like they're doing Sister Brooks, who came up with the idea that they were doing something wrong with the juvenile courses. Now they putting out this propaganda trying to assassinate her so she can't be the one who wins the election. Mm -hmm. They'll do that with any project that we have. So they don't need to know everything I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Let me go to Brother Talu. Mm -hmm. And then you had your hand up. But it's something urgent, pressing, that I would like for you to speak about in terms of uh, the overall analysis. Plan of action, contentment, happy slave, going forward. How do you see that unfolding? Well, are there some things about to unfold? Paul, Paul is absolutely correct. Okay, we can't become like like we were in the past, you know, exposing ourselves and being picked off like little ducklings in a pond. <laughs> you know, we can't do that anymore. You know, we have to become, we have to evolve and become as sophisticated as the enemy, so to speak. Okay. And we don't really need to have a plan on the public table anymore. Okay, we have to become like gorilla, you know, like a gorilla approach. You know, we, we this is serious business. We're talking about saving ourselves and saving our people. You know, that's not a small thing. It should never be taken like it's a small thing. It's a big thing. Okay. Okay. And here in Memphis, Tennessee, it's bigger than life. It's the biggest thing there is in Memphis, Tennessee, number one, we have to understand what Memphis is. What is it? Okay, most of us are just uh, trying to become gainfully employed, you know, and do the right things and, and as we're told the right things are. But really, Memphis is a holding tank for slaves. The reserve label is right here, okay? See, in any organization or any corporation, okay, regardless of what they're doing, you have an inventory, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the manufacturing side. Yeah. You have, uh, 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 um, um, you, yes, you have the elements of the of a, a business operation, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can't in this town in Memphis, you can't gainfully employ everybody. Somebody or some massive group are just going to have to be sitting there idle, waiting for the, for the politician to say, this company is moving into the town, and we have a reserve workforce that can be placed in that company, right? Okay. okay. So the makeup of this city is not, as we always say, like a, a slave plantation. No, it's a label camp. It's more, you know what I mean? It's not a, 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 It's not so much as people are out working and doing things for nothing. Mm -hmm. It's a reserve power, the reserve labor front right here. Okay. Huge, massive one. That's why you see a lot of brothers just sitting on the corner mm -hmm. doing nothing. Because the city uh, doesn't want to employ them. They want them sitting on the corner doing nothing. Okay, as a reserve force, labor force. Okay. And to point to any corporation that says, oh, we're going to move to Memphis. We want, we want to come here. They can point to the fact we have X amount of people ready to come in and work for you. Mm -hmm. And that's crazy. That's insane. Mm -hmm. But that's the reality of this place that we call Memphis. That's okay. what Memphis is. Okay, you, you, you all have accurately described a huge complex problem. Darius, you had your hand up. All right. Speak on what you want to speak on, but also when you finish, I want you to say something about the I have made it complex. Okay. But make your first point. Okay. So um, I really like what both of you just said, right? Because that, that that's the first couple of steps in any problem is pointing out what two problems you have. Also, what you did was you pointed out what tools we have to fix the problem. Because we have, um, apparently we have plenty of people to put the labels, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we have a plan, but the plan, you're right, a, a, a single person can't be um, saying that they're the person. What, what has to be is a role mm -hmm. and position, and it, but it has to be transparent enough that everyone, excuse me, everyone can see it, so therefore they can understand why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, if um, 
uh, if you take a child and you have a child selling drugs, right? Mm -hmm. the, 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 the drug kingpin knows that, that he can pay this child less money than he paid somebody to stand on the corner. Plus, if he gets hemmed up, he's not going to be prosecuted as a adult. It's not likely mm -hmm. he's going to be prosecuted as a adult, so this is why he's more beneficial. So to explain that to the young man, that this is why he's you, this is why you're expendable to him, and then saying, well, this is what you can do instead of that, mm -hmm. that's how we can start getting them back mm -hmm. in the labor. Mm -hmm. um, the plan needs to be put together, and each role and each position have to be explained because when the top leader is assassinated, because he will be, character, she or he, character or um, spiritually or even physically um, assassinated. I, I was listening to a speech with Louis Farrakhan and he spoke of all the different leaders um, over the years that step up and then their characters were attacked. Mm -hmm. Ma, I've heard intelligent brothers talk about well, Martin Luther King did this mm -hmm. when he stepped off the, uh, off the thing and Malcolm was like this and maybe he didn't want to do this no more and da 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 da, -da. And what you start doing is you start attacking the human role. But if we treat it like it's a corporation, mm -hmm. a business, mm -hmm. while we are at a work, mm -hmm. we don't talk about what you do while you at home. Because mm -hmm. it ain't got nothing to do with getting a job done. Mm -hmm. As long as you're getting a job done, that's all that matters. Mm -hmm. Who cares if you have seven women at home? Right. Or who cares if 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 if, if you a woman and you and you slept with this many guys or you sleep with other women? At this point, mm -hmm. what's important now is getting the job done. And we ain't got nobody getting the job done, but everybody attacking people who step up to get the job done. So we are uh, destroying ourselves before we get the situation. Just take Judge Joe Brown. Uh, everybody in the city wanted to say, oh man, we, we know we're going to vote for him because he got to win, right? Mm -hmm. But then we had, shortly afterwards, half the people that said they want to roll with him turn around and say, he too, he too cocky. <laughs> <laughs> he too arrogant. And then you go public with these. Right. So now you are doing free smear campaign mm -hmm. against the representative that's going to represent you. Right. Destroying our own leadership. That's what stopped us from moving. Okay. That's what's keeping us. Absolutely. So that was, no, okay. no. But I want to switch now, since you expounded so beautifully, over here about this, I have made it. Mm -hmm. Have they really made it? What is making it? What is making it? That's a and, and, and where did that come from? Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and tell you. Okay. It actually evolved or came about after the Civil Rights Act. Yeah, okay. And okay. plus, Dr. King said, let's withdraw our economic support. And if you notice carefully, that's when he was assassinated. Okay. But let's talk about the, I have made it, okay. and therefore I'm happy. Okay. I can speak personally to my mm -hmm. experiences uh, with my parents. I remember we moved to, um, when we, I grew up in South Memphis, okay. Joy Lane, to be exactly the street. Joy Lane. Lane. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> that's why I was born and raised. And then my parents, um, they made some money. We moved to White Haven. We moved to White Haven. They were happy in White Haven. White Haven was nice. We had, all, we had white neighbors and everything was just beautiful and it was glorious. And my brothers and I, we were getting good education and a good, you know, Memphis City School. And um, I saw that not only with my parents, but with my aunts and my uncles and with all the black people who moved into the neighborhood. And, we just started to, you know, say, hey, let's celebrate. It's everything nice. We got our beautiful shrubbery, our, our white picket fences. and um, Should have been black. <laughs> right, right. Um, so we, we made it. We made it. And it was just like, we good now. You know, but what else we got to do? What else we got to do? Um, but what I, what I find to be funny now is that as, other younger African Americans move into the neighborhood, then of course, you know, white people, they move out. And what we see, I work in the Department of Social Work, and I have, okay. a, there's a, um, a doctor who studies the movement of people outside of the city. Okay. Um, right, if, if this is Memphis, black people increase, white people decrease. Black people, I mean, white people move further and further out, which is uh, why Lakeland is so, con it's, it's growing, mm -hmm. Olive Branch. Mm -hmm. Is growing, okay. and what we have here, and what we're going to see in the next maybe fifteen to twenty years, is all of this. Mm -hmm. And those of us who think we made it, we're going to strive to move out here. We're going, and this is going. <laughs> it's, it's it's really interesting. So really so interesting. so so the syndrome among African Americans mm -hmm. as a result of the civil rights recent civil rights mm -hmm. movement, I have made it. 
it's not true. It's really an illusion right. based on mm -hmm. having been deluded. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going on. So that's where we are. Brother Talu, mm -hmm. earlier I spoke about the various programs that could be announced. What I was talking about was more like educational programs. That was basically what I was talking about, educational programs. Some things to, that can be discussed openly. And obviously there are some things that should, even in your life, you know, your personal life, some things you don't care to that was. But expound, if you will, on in terms of the division. What, what I heard come out of that when he was talking was division among African Americans. I heard division come out of there and some other uh, profound words. But go ahead. Ignorance. ignorance. That's a good one. Yeah. Ignorance is the, the element of destruction in that um, individuals without knowledge or individuals who reject knowledge act on things that brings about the demise of the thing, mm -hmm. so to speak, right? So ignorance among us is is big, really big, okay. Um, and and from that ignorance be, brings selfishness as well, okay. And so what we have become in essence is a group of ignorant and selfish people, okay. Uh, even the attack on Judge Joe Brown, for an example, that Derek brought up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, um, it's out of ignorance mm -hmm. because the big picture. I mean, if, if one could see the big picture, they would never attack an individual whose opponent is a Tea Party Republican right wing killer. Yeah, <laughs> you understand? Okay, and that's what his opponent is. That his opponent represents that faction of politics. Mm -hmm. Okay, he doesn't aspire to those types of things. You know, he's a decent, honorable man who happened to be an African American, okay, or black American. Mm -hmm. But ignorance attack and try to find a crack in his shield, so to speak. And once they find a little crack, once ignorance found a very small crack, it can wage into that crack and bust it, uh, that, that shield, mm -hmm. and bust it wide open. So that's why ignorance is destructive. Okay. Let's take, let's take, it's almost one o'clock. Let's take five more minutes and let's go around the table with some final thoughts about why African Americans are so, because you see that even with President Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Why we're so quick to, I'm going to use the term, turn on people <laughs> just like us. Why African Americans are so, so quick and eager to do that? And my second question is, should there be, and I'm not going to call it an educational program or seminar or whatever, I'm going to call it an informing program that informs the people about some of the ignorance that we've played into. So we've got, let's take five, five minutes, six minutes around the table, and let's go to you, Brother Paul, two minutes. Well, it, it, when you talk about ignorance, it, 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 it causes, it, it's a hard topic, it's a difficult topic to solve in one, with one solution. I mean, even with the real estate, you know, if we don't recognize this, that it's racism, you know, when, 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 when the demand, when the supply is high and the demand is low and the property value goes down, so when they fly out, mm -hmm. the real estate agencies automatically give them a deal outside the Lakeland and mm -hmm. Oakland and mm -hmm. Somerville mm -hmm. because the supply is high and demand is low. And when we come out there, mm -hmm. the supply is low and demand is high, we end up paying more. Mm -hmm. See, we have to recognize that following them is to our demise. Mm -hmm. Because number one, their whole goal is to, in 10, 15 years, they're coming back to the inner city when mm -hmm. we're gone. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you can see that happening right now. Mm -hmm. I've experienced it in three mm -hmm. different cities where we move out following them, pay extra money to get the houses, and then they come back right back where we left and buy a dirt ball cheap and, and get the government funds to develop the area, and then we can't move back in. That happened in Washington, D.C. Yeah, we, 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 see a pattern. we see a pattern across the sociological so, landscape. Is that right? So that's a part of ignorance. 
Right. And that's that's what, what, and, and we need to inform our people about things like that. And there's many more other examples that I can give, but sure. I'm just going to give some. We have a few minutes. Uh, Ms. Cherie, why are African Americans so eager to follow this other group um, for my, my own niceness? <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere they go. Right. Why are they so eager to do this? Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, well, my whole thing, I, I always go back to the Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch for everything. Um, okay. You know, <laughs> with the division, the ignorance, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. man versus woman, young versus old. You know, they wanted us to separate so we can, you know, see our trust and, and our, give our love to them. And so, therefore, we want to be like them. We want to identify with them. I'm not going to go into religion, so I always do it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yes, uh, that's that's the reason why I see it. You know, there's a big division, and we need someone to look after, and they made themselves almost this God that we want to, mm -hmm. you know, be in the image of. Um, but, no, I completely agree, you know, with the whole white flight. You know, they leave, and we always say, oh, you got black people? Oh, oh, no, this ain't right. Okay, well, I'm going to Germantown. And so, and then they come back because I live downtown, and they are buying up property like it's like it's nothing, and they completely created a, a new community. And so, yeah, I, I um, I see the ignorance in my brothers and sisters. I'm just trying to figure out, like right now, I'm, I'm just Actually, trying to figure out how to, how to fix it. And this yeah, said, I'm very good. Right, you're moving right direction. Actually, it's very sad. Gary, I want to frame this next question to you like this. Historically, African Americans slash black people, slave wise, we've been treated pretty horrible by this particular group. And yet, and not all African Americans, otherwise this group wouldn't be sitting here talking about what we're talking about. But many African Americans continue to choose to love this other group of people, trail them around, follow them around. Would you put self-hatred in there, or lack of self-knowledge, in that equation? I would. I would put lack of self-knowledge. Okay. Um, what 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 all this goes back to um, is um, what we are chasing is that happiness. Mm -hmm. We're chasing that made it factor. But as long as they keep raising the bar, um, you're gonna keep on having to strive yourself. You're gonna stress yourself. We'll give you the better job, but we'll put you somewhere to where your money is still amounting to the same situation. Um, what we had to do, um, and I don't know if we talked about this last time or it was in another conversation, was realize that maybe where Martin Luther King said that we should make, we've all, we've done it. That's it's been done. So now at this point is the rebuilding factor. So what what what, what I would say is we go back to, and this is what I've been kind of putting this bug in the ear of all my friends is I want to go back to South Memphis. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I want to promote moving to South Memphis. Like um, they have downtown. Uh, they have Midtown. They have uh, all the little parts they annex. Mm -hmm. So what if we say, look, all right, we finna rebuild South Memphis. Memphis has the largest amount of African Americans in the country in one area, Memphis. We have an educational system that's already been set up through Brother and the Marcus Goff Institute. Mm -hmm. We have a tourist attraction because tours help spend money and bring dollars back into your community mm -hmm. with stats, with the Mitchell uh, Studio. So we have two major uh, uh, things that are global mm -hmm. that people will come to Memphis to see, South Memphis to see. Uh, we open up our own restaurants, understanding, um, looking and studying how the Chinese and the Mexicans are able to maintain their restaurants for so long, which is not overcharging on high-end products, but overcharging on low-end products mm -hmm. and then cutting a deal on a high-end product. Mm -hmm. I sell uh, a, a 50 cent cup of rice for five dollars, and that's the reason why I can cut a two dollar profit off a of lobster mm -hmm. because I'm not trying to do that. Mm -hmm. But that that will be the beginning of creating. And that's what I say: move back to South Memphis. Okay, we've got about three minutes left. Uh, Miss Kim, mm -hmm. he says the problem is the lack of self-knowledge. Mm -hmm. And obviously that is true. What role does economics play in our problem? And do African Americans for the most part lack a clear understanding of economics? Uh, we do. 
We do. And it's important. Yes, and I think yes stands alone. Um, but I was in a conversation with you and um, can't even call his name right now, but he mentioned, and I even told this to a friend yesterday when he, when the young man told it to me, that we have money. We just spend it in the wrong place. Right. We don't know how to save. I mean, we have, we have $30.00. You know, and this is what he mentioned. We were at a um, a locally owned bar. Okay. We could, yeah, F Dub. We could have used that thirty dollars somewhere else to get something to eat or to entertain somebody else of you know our persuasion. We could have used that thirty dollars to you know put it mm -hmm. towards something else. Instead, we choose to you know put it towards this. And when I was out with my friends last night, we all talked about we're all not all not all of us are single women, um, single mothers, but we talked about how we spend most of our money on groceries, gas, and going out to eat. When we could use that money for something else, yes. if we had conversations like that all the time, then I, I I do believe we would have a change of mindset. So it begins with a conversation. It begins with educating our people on how we can better spend our money. Okay, Brother Talu, mm -hmm. is it a question of competition, advertising, and marketing as we talk about economics? No. It's okay. No. Um, it is a question with established entrepreneurs and business people, okay? So would they know how to compete in the advertising market? Well, the business um, people I'm talking the, the about. The status quo, the, the Caucasian uh, Jewish corporation is essential that they advertise because they're competitive against one another. In the black community, we have nothing. So what are we going to advertise for? We have nothing. Now, the, 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 the thing about it is we should become so close together until word of mouth is is uh, uh, as valuable as an ad on a TV or a radio station. Okay, okay. so you're saying because we have so, nothing, right? You, you you're not saying that this will never come into the equation, the competition, the market. You're just saying right now, African Americans lack they lack unity. Absolutely, you saying See, because you said. Close together. Let, let, let's think in terms. Trust does trust and love come in there? Trust. What, the marketplace. Yeah, the marketplace. See, all the marketplace. Of that. All of that. Is, yeah, the marketplace is just a, a, a living organism on its own. Yeah. Okay. We don't see our community as a marketplace. We see their community as a marketplace. Okay? Right. But once we become, once we get to the point where we can see our community as the marketplace, then we'll do what that market say it needs to have done. Okay. Because the market demands certain things. Okay? It's called supply and, and demand. demand. Right. Okay? So if we create a marketplace, then if, if you have to advertise because the competition is stiff, then you advertise. But so right now, for 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 um, our businesses that we have in Memphis, Tennessee, is so few of them, you know. Until we should know where every we should know by word of mouth where every black business is because it's only ten, mm -hmm. so to speak. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Okay. So that puts we, we're but, back at the but so that puts us back at the informing stage. The the word that I use to replace educational stage and there are many facets of this. So in terms of that discussion, that's where we come back to informing African Americans. Informing. So let's not say education because sometimes just some of these words can become just something that people hear and everybody's using the same word. So information is where we come back to and we're about out of time. I, I see Kalut has some uh, something else to say and I see you have your hand up and Let's close out after that. Sure. I will finish up Talut Tal and let's yeah. go to Darius. Yeah. Our, our major problem is, as, as a people is we fail to do what Frederick Douglass said do. And that is, do not compare the Negro by the standards of the white man, mm -hmm. so to speak. So that okay. brings us back to self-knowledge. Right. We That's what that brings us back right. to. We, understanding our selves, our history, and here's one word we haven't used today, and that is culture. And when we come back, we'll probably take up with that word culture. I think that's something else that we people use as a cliche without even understanding what culture is and what culture does. I won't break it down here today, 
but finish up kind of then you guys will forgive me for talking mm -hmm. then Darius yeah um and, and and so our problem is that our problem is we think when we get ready to go into business I've been in business so many times until I just lost count <laughs> I guess okay. you. <laughs> but when, when we go into business, most of us, we think in terms of what they are doing. Uh -huh. We need to do it the way they are doing it. But we don't. Right. We need to do it the way we, we are need going to, to do, do it. it. Right. All going to do it. it because, see, it, one example, one quick example. Yes. If an if a African American is going to open up a restaurant, okay, they're one, they're, they're, they are going to want to have that structure that building looking like operating like they do uh -huh. so they're going to spend and a lot of investment money trying to get the physical yeah. attitude of the thing up to the standard of the white man yeah and that is in fact backwards that's backwards yeah exactly darius and then we've <laughs> got to close it after that we'll continue on the outside all right um i, I want to disagree with a lot of the things you just said sure. based off of He's an owner. Sure. Uh, 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 um, marketing is what we don't do well. That's what we do terribly. You mentioned earlier. In fact, I think that's something that Carter G. Wilson covered in his book too. Go ahead. And, and earlier, you mentioned uh, guerrilla marketing, but we had to be uh, go back to a guerrilla guerrilla marketing. The 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 book um, only talked about um, word of mouth does not work. Uh, word of mouth does not work. Flyers do not work. Commercials do not work. Um, no form of advertising works unless you're doing all of it. Mm -hmm. All business is marketing. I worked in sales. When mm -hmm. I worked in sales, the first thing we opened up with was, hey, uh, my name is Darius. I'm, I'm with Innovative Merchant Lucy. It's an Intuit company. Quick and QuickBooks TurboTax. Mm -hmm. What I just did was told you about these other three products before I even began to sell you mm -hmm. into the new product. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have to market education. Mm -hmm. And saying that this is what's working because bling was marketed to us mm -hmm. through our music. Um, the 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 uh, standard of living is marketed to us through television. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we have to market um, a greater living standard through our culture. Um, before we can get